Welcome to lecture 2.4, the product and quotient rules for derivatives. Again, um, in our last lecture we began looking at some shortcuts um, for solving derivatives or finding differentials um, of functions. And so today we're going to add two new rules to that, the product and quotient rules. Okay? These are again kind of formulas that you really need to know for all of calculus. Um, and they may seem a little complicated to begin with, but the more you practice, the stronger these will become part of your knowledge set, your basic knowledge. So the product rule is when we have a function, f of x, that we could write as a product of two other functions, kind of a composite, you might think. Okay. So here, if f of x is, is, can be written as the product of two functions, where both the functions u and v are differentiable functions of x, then the derivative of x, f of x, excuse me, the derivative of f of x is equal to u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. Okay, so it's uv prime plus vu prime. Okay, the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. And since it's a sum, it doesn't matter the order that you do these in. Okay, thus the derivative of a product of two functions is the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. Okay, and again you can see it there. Um, the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. All right, shorthand notation here uv prime plus u prime v. So let's look at a couple of problems here. Um, the first one, we're getting uh, some good notation swaps in here. Um, dy dx, remember, is the same as um, y prime, is the same as if we wrote this as f of x, it would be f prime x. So this is just a different notation. Um, and notice here we're actually trying to find um, the derivative at a specific point. So notice this will be a value, not a formula. And notice it doesn't even ask us to find the derivative, it asks to find the slope of the tangent, which hopefully you realize is the same thing as find the derivative. The slope of the tangent is the derivative. All right? So remember, we're going to take this first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. All right? So the first function times the derivative of the second, the derivative of x squared is 2x. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Plus the derivative of 4 is 0. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are you saying bless you out there in virtual land? So the first function, u, times the derivative of the second, which is just 2x, plus the second function, x squared plus 4, times the derivative of the first. Okay, using the power rule, remember the exponent comes down in front, so we get 3x squared times 2 is 6x squared, plus the derivative of 3x is just 3. Again, there's an exponent of 1, it comes down, and then the exponent becomes 0. Whenever we just have a multiplier times x, the derivative is that multiplier. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So now if I FOIL these out or multiply these out, I get 4x to the 4th plus 6x squared, etc. I get this long polynomial and then I can combine like terms. The x to the 4th, the x squared, the x's and the constants. And I get this final answer. Once we get to this point, it's all algebra. Um, you do need to practice this uh, because in calculus, um, there is a lot of algebra you're going to have to do and a lot of it like this where you walk through steps and it's easy to make mistakes. So you really want to be um, practicing these. I think you want to be writing them out on paper even if you're doing online homework. All right, let's look at the next one. This one's even longer, um, a longer polynomial. So the first function times the derivative of the second. Notice the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared the derivative of minus 4x squared is minus 8x, and then of course the derivative of 1 is 0. So we get 3x squared minus 8x times the first. The derivative here is 4x, um, I'm sorry, 3x squared, so we get 12x squared, right there. Um, the derivative of x squared is 2x times 5 is 10x, 
ah, I keep doing that, sorry. And then, of course, again, we have negative 6x, so that's just minus 6, and the 5 derivative is 0. Now, um, we could multiply these out, but the good news is we're trying to find the derivative when x equals 1. So instead of multiplying these out with FOIL, it's actually smarter to just plug the 1 in now, because 1 to any power is always 1. So we get 4 plus 5 minus 6 plus 5 times 3 minus 8 um, plus the quantity of 1 minus 4 plus 1 times the quantity of 12 plus 10 minus 6. And if you plug all that in, you should get negative 72. I'm not going to walk through this. Um, I think you can try that. And if you don't understand um, this piece, uh, I'm not sure if there's a video here or not, but you can go back in. This is all algebra at this point. Okay. The only thing I'm saying here, and in fact, if I asked you to find the formula, I actually think I'd be happy with you just leaving it in product form like it is here um, instead of multiplying this out. There is a method called the box method or the matrix method where you build a multiplication. So you build a multiplication 4 by 2. I put these terms across the top, across the four boxes, and this along the side too, and then you multiply them out. It just makes it easier to see. It's kind of an extended foil. Okay. This one's a little bit more complicated, and your book uses different um, variables to explain this. And because it's a, a slightly complicated formula, I used n and d to represent numerator and denominator. Now, in this one, it's very important that you have the parts in the right place, okay? In the, in the product rule, because you're adding them, you can do first derivative times second function plus second function times, or excuse me, first function times second derivative, or second function, derivative of second, et cetera. Um, but when you're dealing with the quotient, you have to have these in order. You cannot switch the order of the numerator. So notice it's the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator and then this is all over the denominator squared. Okay? So let's look at a... Um, oh, this is a good good kind of heads up. Again, a lot of times in math, our brains um, are familiar with patterns. Our brains um, almost organize all of our data into patterns. And so... Uh, when we take the derivative of a sum, remember we take the derivative of each part. And it's very um, normal for your brain to say, hey, why don't I just take the derivative of the numerator and take the derivative of the denominator, and then I'll have the derivative of this. That does not work. Okay, That's your brain trying to help you, and it does not work. You've got to use this formula. Okay. The denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, all divided by the denominator squared. And I like this shorthand notation because I think it helps me to remember it. n prime d minus n d prime over d squared. Numerator prime d minus numerator denominator prime over denominator squared. All right, enough of that. I've said it too many times. Let's see it. All right. So notice here, um, I've taken a very simple rule, so we can, or a very simple function, x cubed over x, which if we simplified the fraction first, we'd get x squared, and notice if we took the derivative of this, it's just simply 2x. So we already know what the answer is for the derivative of x cubed over x, but let's now try it in the context of the quotient form rule. So... Oh, that's interesting. Again, they're using u for the numerator and v for the denominator, which I hate. All right, so again, the numerator, the derivative of the numerator, which is 3x squared, times the denominator, x. Derivative of the numerator, 3x squared, times the denominator, x. We just did that little part there, and that's right here. The derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, which is 1, times the numerator, x cubed. Okay, And this is all over the denominator squared. The denominator is x, so it now becomes x squared. 
Now all we have to do is multiply through and simplify. And notice we get 3x cubed minus x cubed. So this is three cats minus a cat. We get two cats left. So we have 2x cubed left. And if we divide x cubed by x squared, we get x. And so we get 2x, which is the same thing there. So this is kind of like a little a simple check that we can see that it does actually work. It's one of the first magic parts again that we see in calculus. Now let's try some more difficult ones. Okay. This is another good place to hit pause and try it on your own. Okay. We want the derivative of the numerator, which is 2x minus 4, times the denominator, x plus 5. That's just the first term. 2x minus 4, that's our derivative, times x plus 5 minus the numerator, x squared minus 4x, times the derivative of the denominator. Notice the derivative of the denominator is just 1, and that's all over x plus 5 squared. Do not, this is not x squared plus 25, it's x plus 5, the quantity squared. Okay? Denominator, derivative of numerator, numerator, derivative of denominator. Okay? Now we're going to multiply these out. We have a FOIL here on the left, and then just, uh, this is already there, but make sure you distribute the negative. Again, a big problem I see is, remember, since we're subtracting in the numerator, whatever you have over here, you should, sub you should change the sign of each piece at the end. So this is minus x squared plus 4x, plus 4x, because minus a minus is positive. This is a big mistake. I'll often see minus x squared minus 4x. They forget to change it because everything we're subtracting this whole function here after the minus sign. And when I simplify this, I get x squared plus 10x minus 20, uh, which is the factors of that, the numerator, or I think, um, no, I don't know that there are factors of that that we can factor. So you always want to check this and see if you can drop a factor out, but there's our answer for A. All right, let's look for B. Again, the numerator, uh, we're looking for the derivative of the numerator. So we get 3x squared minus 6x plus 0, or just leave it at the minus 6x, times the denominator, x squared minus 4. The derivative of the numerator, 3x squared minus 6x times the denominator, x squared minus 4, minus the derivative of the denominator, which is just 2x, times the numerator, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2, all over the denominator squared. Okay. When I FOIL out this product over here on the left, I get this. When I multiply this trinomial times a binomial, I get this. Remember, again, we're going to distribute the negative, so we'll ultimately get minus 2x, 4, plus 6x cubed, minus 4x. When I combine all these terms, like terms, I get what's over here on the left. Um, but notice again, it asked us to find it at x equals 3. Now because x e is not 1, I did choose to simplify this first and then plug it in because 3 to the 4th, you know, it, it gets much more complicated up here. If it's 1, I can plug it in pretty early. So all I do is plug um, 3 into this equation, 3 to the 4th minus 12, 3 squared, plus 20 times 3, all divided by 3 squared minus 4, and that quantity squared. And if you do it out, you should get 1.32. Again, notice I'm not focusing on the algebra. All right. Now, I could solve this two ways. Notice this function, y equals 1 over x cubed, could be written as x to the negative 3 which would allow me to use the power rule, which to me is a hell of a lot simpler. But this asks us to do it um, using the quotient rule. But we should get the same thing. So again, notice we have the numerator, the derivative of the numerator times the denominator. Well, the numerator is 1. The derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of a constant is 0, so this whole term is going to go away. The derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. Well, the numerator is 1. The derivative of the denominator is 3x squared. 3x squared. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right. 
And then, of course, all over the denominator squared. And remember that when we raise a power to a power, we multiply those. So multiplying this out, I get negative 3x squared all over x to the 6. When I simplify um, by reducing the variables, the exponents here, I get minus 3 over x to the 4. Okay? And here we can see the same thing um, using the power rule. Okay. So knowing that um, the that tangent x equals sine over cosine, and the fact that we know the fact that we know um, the tangent, I mean a rule for a quotient, we can find the derivative of tangent. <coughs> we first write it as sine over cosine, and remember we do the numerator, the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. Now this is actually written wrong. This says the cosine of x squared. That 2 should be between the cosine and x. So this is a little bit of typo. Must have been that damn professor. Oh wait, that's me. Alright, let's move on. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So when we multiply this through, we get cosine squared plus sine squared, and if hopefully you remember that um, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. This is one of our trig identities, one of our most basic trig identities. And um, we get 1 over cosine squared, which hopefully, again, this is another identity. This is the reciprocal identity of secant squared. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Now we proved that one, but you can prove the rest of these. Um, here is the list of derivatives for trig functions. We've already done sine, which is cosine, cosine, which is negative sine. We just did tangent, which is secant squared. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times cotangent. The derivative of secant is secant times tangent. And the derivative of cotangent is negative secant squared. Okay. You can do the same kind of proofs there using all the reciprocal identities, knowing that cosecant is 1 over sine, secant is 1 over cosine, and cotangent is uh, 1 over tangent or cosine over sine. All right. Let's try a problem. Oh, I guess we're not going to try any problems. I guess you'll get to do those in your homework. All right. So... We come to a concept called marginal revenue. This is really more of a business application of, of calculus. Um, so um, revenue is money that you earn, so it's your income. So for example, if you have a job, your revenue would be your paycheck. Costs are money that you spend. If you're a business, it would be you know your rent, whatever it costs to manufacture your product, etc. In our lives, you might think of it as your rent as well, or your utility bills, etc. Okay. So uh, the marginal revenue is the money that you make for selling the next item. Okay. So it's the change in revenue. It's it's the additional revenue you make for each item. Okay. And also note here, when we're asking for the marginal revenue at 15, what this is telling us is what we'll make for the next item. So the marginal revenue at 15 is telling us what money we will make for selling the 16th item. Okay? Now marginal revenue, because it's a rate of change of the revenue, is actually equal to the derivative of the revenue function. Since our um, revenue function is or has a quotient in it, we're going to take the derivative of the first piece because we can do separate them, right? Because this is a sum. So we can take the derivative of the first piece plus the derivative of the second piece. And the second piece is a quotient. So the derivative of 10x is 10. The derivative of 100x over 3x plus 5 is the derivative of the numerator, 100, times the denominator, minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over the denominator squared. Again, we multiply these out and simplify, and we get the marginal revenue function is equal to 10 plus 500 over 3x plus 5, that quantity squared. Okay? I know I'm talking through these fast, but hopefully you can see them pieces here and can go back and look at those. Okay? So now we need the marginal revenue at 15. So 
I wish I had left that function up here. Um, let's go back for just a second. So notice our marginal revenue is 10 plus 500 over 3x plus 5 squared. 10 plus 500 over the original denominator squared. Okay. So the marginal revenue in x is 15 is 10 plus 500 over 3x plus 5 squared. 3 times x, which is 15. Ah. Let's go back a little bit, sorry. Um, 3 times 15 plus 5, that whole quantity squared. And so we get 10 over 500 times 50 squared. Now notice this isn't, because it's revenue, it's dollars, so we should um, round to the cents, to the second decimal place, and we get $10.20. And this is saying that um, the sale of the 16th flash drive, for this example, will, we will earn um, $10.20, okay? That's our revenue for the um, 16th flash drive. All right, now that's the end of our lecture for today. Um, hopefully this helped. Definitely practice uh, both the product and quotient rule. These are important rules, and the rules are going to get a little more complicated. Also practice some trigonometry problems. Okay, have a good afternoon, and I will talk to you soon.